Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rome's Cozy Kitchen. I am Rome, and this is my kitchen. We're gonna be making some nice steak. It's summertime, thighs is out. We're gonna be doing a nice pickled jardinera, some veggies, okay? You gotta be healthy. We have our first special guest ever in the history of Rome's Cozy Kitchen, all right? You know him very well. You've seen him in some of my episodes, all right? Harry, gray, sexy like George Clooney, all right? His name is Gilligan. Let's bring him out. Gilligan, come out, all right? Today, we have a very special episode, right? You're gonna be showing us your heirloom secret family recipe passed down by Gilligan to Gilligan generations. It's a, it's a pickle jardinera, right? It's actually a quick pickle, my sir, that's inspired by jardinera. You're gonna to wanna to give us a little tutorial. I'm gonna need you to wash your paws. We don't wanna get anyone sick. We follow procedure here, okay? You know what it is. We're gonna take a commercial break. Gilligan's gonna come back. He's gonna show us what he's doing with this jardinera. Rome's Cozy Kitchen, let's do it. First things first, we're gonna wanna make this pickling liquid. That's the first important thing, all right? So for that, you're gonna need this beautiful 5-2 pot, okay, sauce pot. And you're gonna wanna add all your ingredients, the spices, we're talking water and vinegar mixed together. We got some dried oregano, red pepper flakes, sweet paprika, beautiful fennel seed, a bit of that kosher salt, some olive oil, the good stuff, all right? E-V-O-O. -O some sugar and or honey, if you wanna do that. Then you're gonna get yourself a whisk. We're gonna whisk that all together. And we're gonna take this and put this on the stove and uh, bring that up to a nice simmer, okay? Now you got your veg, all right? You're gonna get some cauliflower, some celery, bell peppers, and some serrano chilies. All this is interchangeable, right? I think I might throw some green garlic in there because I have some in the fridge. So you're gonna wanna chop that to little bite-sized small pieces, florets for the cauliflower, little small dices for the bell pepper, small dices for the celery, and little pepper rings for the serrano chili, okay? Make sure you don't wanna touch your red rocket after you cut this, okay? So wash your hands. Don't rub your eyes either. Now, green garlic, because we just happen to have some around. So, in a bowl, you're gonna get all those chopped veggies, mix them up, give them a nice toss, make sure everything is nice and mixed. Get yourself a nice, clean, sterilized mason jar. Start putting the veg in that mason jar, making sure everything is just nice and evenly mixed. Make sure that your pickling liquid is nice and hot. Pour that over top. And if you do have a little bit of headspace on top left where all the veggies aren't completely submerged, get yourself a spoon, push down on that, close it, and let it sit until it gets to room temperature, all right? Very important. And then you're gonna put it in your fridge, and this can last you till a week, to up to two weeks, all right? Throw that on anything, anything, everything, all the time, everywhere. You can put these pickles literally on so many things. Sometimes I put it on a sandwich, right? You make your partner some lunch, you throw it on a little little submarine sandwich, a little, spike, little salami, a little BMT situation, you could do that. With just some like chicken breast, some rice, some quinoa, you can, you can make like a nice quinoa salad with that and actually use some of the juice to dress like a nice, some warm quinoa or something. Plates, like a, like a meat charcuterie board, cheese board situation would be good. You can just eat it out the jar. You know, I'm gonna watch Hunger Games tonight. I'm gonna just eat pickles, probably. We're back, and I just have to say, wow, that was so thrilling, and, and, and it just lit my soul up watching you cook. It's like, it's crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, you can't taste this. You just know he has the, know he's an artist. He has the knowing, but I'm gonna taste this, all right? Is that okay? No, why don't you throw it in the damn trash? Of course, eat it. Here we go. Cheers. Why don't you tell me what it tastes like now? Delicious. Mm -hmm. You taste the spices, the sweetness. Yes, I'm getting that. Mm, I'm getting the spices, right. the paprika. Amazing. So good. Everybody, let's give a round of applause for Gilligan one more time, please. 
gonna get into this steak, all right? Rome's Cozy Kitchen. I got right here beautiful ribeye. When you're cooking steak, whether you're grilling it or pan sharing it, like what we're about to do right here, I like to have my steak sitting out at room temperature for about 20 to 30 minutes. I had it on medium, like medium low heat, just riding for a very long time. These pans can hold a lot of heat. We got a resting rack right here. You definitely want to have a resting rack where air can circulate under it and off around it. We're going to do about three minutes one side, three minutes another side. That should get us a nice medium rare. If you're feeling a little bit iffy and you don't, and you want to use like some thermometers, definitely do that. I'm going to be using some neutral oil, just a splash of it, all right? It's a lot of fat content in this steak right here. A lot of people ask me in my recipes, can this work in the air fryer? I don't know if you could put a rib on the air fryer. I don't know. I'll just say that here. So I'm going to just, I'm going to season this. Got some nice coarse kosher salt. I got some fresh cracked black pepper right here. So with the hand that I touched the meat with, I'm just gonna press down on it. Stud it out. We're gonna flip it with my clean hand. I'm gonna get some more salt. The pan is smoking lightly, that's okay. I just know we're going into a hot pan, all right? Don't be scared. We're gonna take this steak and we're just gonna lay it down. And when you put a steak down, right, whether it's on a grill or a pan like this, you don't wanna move it around too much. You don't wanna sit it there and then just let it do its thing. Control that heat. If it's smelling a little burnt and, you, and, you, and maybe your shirt lifted up a little bit or something, you'll smell it. Be there, be present, okay? So this is riding on like medium. This is electric stove, it sucks, but it's like medium heat right now. And we're just gonna let that do its thing, get caramelized. Who are you feeding today with this steak when you make this at home? What do you, you know? Just think about that person. Think about, uh, you're gonna watch on TV, you eat this, and get your eating blanket, and you just eat a steak, okay? Doctor Strange, crazy, good movie. The Illuminati is real. That's what that proves to me as an intellectual, as like myself. Illuminati's real, your phone, they're listening to everything. You are not alone, Michael Jackson said it. Now we're gonna flip this steak, look at this. That's what you're looking for right there. So once you flip your steak, I'm gonna throw this green garlic just for, for, for smells and vibes. And then we're gonna get some butter, this is butter I made here. And we're gonna do another three minutes, okay? You can just do this. In a situation like that, but we wanna caramelize that. So I'm gonna let this sit down on that side for a bit and let it caramelize, do its thing. The butter's browning, things are happening. When it comes to steak, there's gonna be some hate coming behind what I'm about to say, but it's like wine. It's like, you like what you like. If you like it well done and you eat and you finish it up and you pay for it, everyone has the right to like, like it like that. Some people like it black and blue. I think that's gross and horrible and dumb, but some people like, like black and blue, you know? So cook it to what you like. But me, medium rare, I suggest people to start, especially for like, if it's like a ribeye, bavette, something like this, medium. Okay, it's like right there in the middle, perfect. And let your steak rest. Okay, you don't wanna grill it, put it on the cutting board, chop it up, there's juice running everywhere, then you, you might not wanna eat it. Or it'll be dry, it'll be gross. You know, you don't want that. The bottom, we got nice caramelization there too. So what we're gonna do too is you put this there because, and then you just get that butter. And just let that rest. Like and subscribe to Food52. What are you drinking with this steak? A nice local, if you're, if you're, if you're lucky enough, you know, we're in Oregon, some nice red wine, all right? Get a Magnum. If, if, if you got it like that, you know, but like a nice red wine, a Coke, 
if you just want to do that. It's so many different beverage types, okay? I like spritzers now, that's just who I've become. You know what's cool about this dish too? Yes, it's lunch, it's dinner, but you can also, you put a fried egg on that. The pickles on the side, okay? That's like a little brunch situation. What do you drink at brunches? You know, mimosas, uh, Bloody Marys, anything, honestly. Um, and not white wine though, that's just wrong. And there you have it, all right? Our first ever special guest on Rome's Cozy Kitchen, Gilligan. Thank you guys for watching. We're gonna do a taste test, but Gilly's gonna do a taste test, all right? He's been such a good boy. And this is steak, no salt, no pepper, okay? Stay out the comments. Here we go, what do you think, Gilly? I think he says it needs more salt and more pepper, but you can't have that, okay? I thank you for having me. And all you little kids out there, don't forget to like and subscribe to Food 52 to see more of me, Gilligan. <laughs>